Hey guys, welcome back to Bambi TV. Guys, we are reacting to over 50% of Muslims in the UK are living in poverty. Guys, this is actually something that people say. People actually generalize the fact that Muslims are poor. Yes, some Muslims are poor. But like, I know there are rich, absence of rich Muslims, and yes, I've seen them. But like, some people are just I don't know if it's mindset to a book, guys, let's check this out. There are more of us here, yet we're still in these cycles of poverty and deprivation. Zara Ahmed, Secretary General of the Muslim Council of Britain. The radiator in the room is broken, and there is a hole in the wall, through which cold air and rodents come in. My husband's earning goes towards housing costs, and we have no other place to go to. Bushra Begum, a mother of three children. This is the current reality of many of the Muslims living in the UK. Shocking, isn't it? We think that in developed countries like the UK, there is no such thing as poverty and everyone is living a very comfortable life. But the reality is quite different. There is a lot of poverty. It's just very well hidden. Despite increasing in number, with an increase of 1.2 million, more and more Muslims are stuck in a cycle of poverty. Generation after generation can't seem to lift themselves out of the financial rut. 39% of Muslims are now living in the most deprived areas of the UK. These new statistics have been brought forth by the most recent census. Keep watching this video while we dissect the situation and find out the actual reasons behind these circumstances. Muslims have a higher rate of unemployment than average. The women have a higher percentage of being out of the workforce as compared to the men. There are cultural reasons for these statistics, but no one can deny that there is discrimination as well. Culturally, Muslims have stronger ties and prefer to live in joint family systems. At least one person in the family tends to stay back to look after the elderly. In most cases, it is the women. Muslim households, for that reason, tend to have only one person who is earning, the men. Whereas in a white family, usually both men and women tend to join the workforce. Muslim women are also found hesitant to use formal childcare options and prefer to stay at home until their children start school full time. In Muslim families, gender roles are still largely stereotyped with men performing little household chores like cooking, cleaning, and raising children. The burden of domestic chores falls on the women who then find it easier to just stay at home. It is not a surprise then that because of only one person earning, most Muslim families are living in poor conditions as compared to the white population. Some of the first generation of British Muslims, who are now aged between 55 to 74, have never worked in the country as they were not fluent in English, neither did they have many transferable skills. Among them, those who have worked previously have other reasons for being in poverty. The lack of Sharia-compliant pension schemes has made many people opt out of pensions. Older Muslims are believed to be losing out on approximately hundreds of thousands of pounds. So, once they stop working, they have nothing to fall back on, except on their own families, who are already struggling to make ends meet. Very large companies not providing a halal option to their employees is actually against Britain's Equality Act of 2010. There is just not enough guidance and awareness on this whole issue. In some cases, there are options available, but Muslim employees are not educated about them when they start a new job. In other cases, there isn't enough pressure on companies by the government to include halal pension scheme so Muslims could be lifted out of poverty. It is blatant discrimination as financial inclusions is extremely important in multicultural countries like the UK to ensure that minorities are not left behind. The second generation of Muslims are comparatively more educated and keener to join the workforce, but there are various barriers to seeking employment. There is some prejudice against Muslim people who go out of their homes to seek employment. In the case of women, this is a lot more visible, as Muslim women want to wear a hijab or a niqab, which can lower their chances of securing employment. 
When younger unemployed Muslim women were interviewed, a lot of them expressed that they wished to work but were unsure of the support and advice available to people who were looking for a job. Most had never been to a job center. Those who had stated that they were not given appropriate help. They believed that even though the government has strict laws against discrimination, they felt like they suffer from a Muslim penalty because of their choice of faith and clothing. The younger generation of Muslims who do have jobs have also expressed that there are discriminatory practices within the work environment which lower the prospects of them moving up the professional ladder. Opportunities for networking are a lot less as most Muslims avoid socializing with colleagues over drinks in a bar or a pub. Yes, they can go for meals, but the fact is that there is a different level of connection over drinks, which most Muslims prefer not to engage in. A 26-year-old trainee, Maha Al-Habib, has expressed, I feel my manager is closer to my colleague because she regularly joins them for Friday night drinks, whereas I don't. I'm worried that my career progression will be impacted if I don't join staff at the pub. Workplaces need to create opportunities where Muslims can also socialize, and there needs to be more understanding of religious boundaries, which other faiths have to adhere to. During the pandemic, most of the unskilled sectors where majority of the Muslim work were shut down. Recently, the war in Ukraine has led to an increase in the cost of fuel and inflation, which has made matters even worse. Many Muslim families have to rely on food banks to feed their children. Tower Hamlets, the borough with the highest number of Muslims, has been reported to have 25% of Muslim children living in poverty. Data has shown that most of the children who are entitled for free school meals due to their families having a less income are consistently performing lower than their peers, not performing well in school. Obviously, significantly, lower their chances of going to college and securing professional jobs, which is the vicious cycle of poverty. There are various stereotypes around Muslims that they choose not to work and obtain benefits from the system. But a recent study by the London School of Economics has stated that this is actually a myth. The reality is that in most low-income families, at least one person is stuck in a low-paid job and struggling to afford increase in housing, food, and fuel costs. In a lot of cases, one family with two to three children are crammed into a single room. UK is a very multicultural country, and it is very vocal against discrimination and racism. On the surface, the country boasts about inclusivity of all ethnicities and religions, but deep down, there is racism when it comes to policies. Recently, a strong fear has risen among the white people that they will soon be outnumbered, and therefore there is pressure on the government to put policies and procedures into place that indirectly does affect the ethnic and religious minorities. Muslims in the UK need to have a stronger voice and put more pressure on the government to make their policies more conducive towards making minorities financially stronger. Until that is taken seriously, Unfortunately, lots of Muslims in the UK will not be able to take their future generations out of these miserable conditions. Hmm. Well, guys, I feel this, what he said about you having a drink. I feel, yeah, Muslims can. you going to a bar to have a drink. <clears throat> it doesn't mean you're taking alcohol. You don't have to take alcohol. You can take water, you can take anything, but like, I feel socializing with your colleagues and stuff, you guys can also still do it in the office or meal or, but the drink part, I think you can still go and not take alcohol. But for the fact that I understand the discrimination, yes, it's everywhere. And I feel it's something that I personally feel is bad. It's not really personal, it's bad. Because in the sense that people, so one thing I know is that people don't understand the religion. That's a fact. So most of people are scared of what they don't know. I I believe right now the religion is being like a lot of people are getting insight on Islam. Like it's becoming well known. So people are 
understanding it. But first be told, with time this will pass on, like it's gonna pass off because people are gonna understand it. Whoa, this is how I understand that this is how your culture works. I know you are qualified for this job. So take it. Yes, I feel that is gonna happen pretty soon. But I don't want to think about this video, just to like, share, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time, guys.